I've been following you in Washington's career, and I believe he's quite the leader. You're right, sir. What say you about this commission? Well, he's rather young, but he's proved himself able. Well said, sir. <laughs> Lord Fairfax, I just read our young Washington's report. Seems to be a trifle of flourishment in these words. What say you? Young Washington's integrity be not the one in question. All the flux is a wretched disease. Make it mortality a constant companion. Shall we dance another? <laughs> well, it would be my pleasure, dear sir, but I'm afraid I have hotly vexed your admirers, whom would gladly see me dangle in the sheriff's picture frame if we were to step again. Oh, but do tell me again, Colonel Washington, for you have failed to describe with any embellishment how you and Christopher Gist were rescued from that iceberg besieged river. Tis all in my journal, Sally. I was just discussing the sensational details of Dr. Craker. Having been published, my dearest darling, in newspapers both here and abroad, have made our royal laddie here the toast of the 13 colonies. Oh, well, I've even heard that the king himself has taken a peek at the venturous tale. Hmm? Twas Governor Dinwiddie's enterprise to make my reports public record. Beyond that, I hid not the ending. Nor did you add any flourish to the extraordinary fact that the very next morning... The Allegheny had to court said flourishless report. Shut up hard with ice, so that our Colonel Washington here and Mr. Gist simply strolled across it. <laughs> Aye, that would be the weight of it. Hmm. And yet, that's not quite, as you say, the weight of it, is it, Colonel? <laughs> Please, dear doctor, has the boy not narrowly escaped the hostilities of the Ohio Valley only to be besieged right here in the governor's palace? I am quite certain, my dear, after such a narrow escape, young Washington has grown quite impenetrable to words, fired by a musket blast of gentlemanly inquiry. Pray tell, Doctor. What say you? I see that I had spoke with Mr. Christopher Gist earlier today. Uh, I've been treating the poor fellow. He's been stricken with a nasty case of frostbite. And according to Mr. Gist, Colonel Washington fancies the timely occasion of a shot up Allegheny, an act of divine providence as opposed to the simple scientific operation of water at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, indeed. And how, George, do you respond to this indictment that some would say to be unreasonable reasoning in the age of reason, sir? With bygone earnest, I should expect. I hold the thought of divine providence quite pleasing, kind sir. As do I, for this port, find it to be quite pleasing indeed, albeit a bit tugged. Well, then, there you have it. Dr. James Craig, Colonel. I've been assigned to serve as chief surgeon in your provincial regiment, uh, sir. Tis a pleasure, although I sincerely hope I will not be in need of your services, Doctor. <laughs> Aye, Colonel. I shall, between musket fire and war whoops, look forward to the continuance of our discourse. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some matters to attend. Uh, Water whoops, you see? Aye. And scalping knives. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good Eve. William. <laughs>